Moving over on to the next slide here, what we're looking at here, you know, you see here macronutrients. This is macro, meaning large. This is your fats, your proteins, and your carbs. And then we have micronutrients, which are your vitamins and minerals. Now, why are these so important? So the macronutrients are how we generate energy, right? We generate energy from fat. We generate energy from carbs and protein. Protein is also very important for structure formation. So what is that? Remember, protein, that's your collagen, your soft tissue, uh, your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your cartilage, right? The things that, that you need protein to make. Your immune system relies on the protein to make antibodies to protect you from colds, flus, and other uh, infectious microorganisms. So these macronutrients become very, very critical to your body's ability to generate energy and to also for formation of structure, structural elements. Now energy, we sometimes refer to as biochemistry, as ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And so a lot of people think of energy as like, I'm zippy, I'm peppy, I've got plenty to go, plenty in my gas tank. But I'm talking about biochemical energy here. I'm talking about the ability for your body to generate the substance ATP. ATP is a lot like money in the real world. You need money, right? Why do people need money? They got to be able to buy their food, buy their clothing, buy their shelter, provide for the necessities of life. That's what money does in the real world. Well, ATP does that necessity of energy production in your body so that your body can heal and repair and maintain its integrity, its tissues, and its functionality. So macronutrients are very, very important. Now in America, we generally, we don't have macronutrient deficiencies unless we have major malabsorption problems. The most common type of macronutrient, um, macronutrient malabsorption is fat. And this happens a lot of times, especially it happens in diseases like inflammatory bowel problems. And this, you know, one of the most common is celiac disease, which is caused by gluten, but we also see diseases like Crohn's, uh, ulcerative colitis, and Crohn's disease, which are also inflammatory bowel diseases. So these three conditions oftentimes lead to fat malabsorption. And so what, what we'll see in fat malabsorption is, is Again, fat's a major substrate necessary to produce this right here. So we'll see a lot of fatigue in these individuals and we'll see a lot of wasting. Uh, this is why a lot of times people that present with inflammatory bowel disease with, with chronic fat malabsorption can't put on mass, can't put on weight, have a hard time keeping their weight up because they're malabsorbing one of the major nutrients that help you generate energy. But remember too, fat isn't just the substance that stores in fat cells. Fat Vitamin A and vitamin D and vitamin K and vitamin E are all fats. Omega-3 and omega-6 are fats. And omega-9, these are, these are essential fats that are required to regulate inflammation and to regulate blood viscosity and to help form the nerve coating, the myelin sheath around your nerves and the white matter in your brain. So a deficiency of fat can lead to a whole slew of major, major problems. It just just looking at the vitamin deficiencies alone, the fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies and the symptoms associated with those, you can go back and review some of my master classes on these vitamins and these nutrients uh, because we could talk for hours and hours and hours about the signs and symptoms of deficiency, the disease states of deficiency, but this is, again, the most common, right? It's, it's one of the primary types of malabsorption is fat malabsorption. Now, hallmark of fat malabsorption, if you struggle with chronic diarrhea, right? So if you have chronic diarrhea or if you have tan or clay colored stool, um, then you are malabsorbing fat. That's what that means. That tan discoloration or clay discoloration of the stool is actually fat discoloring your stool. If you have chronic diarrhea, there's a great likelihood you're malabsorbing fat, and not just fat, you're probably going to be malabsorbing um, all of the macronutrients. But again, fat is one of the most, uh, the most common. And fat, it gets a bad rap, right? If you go back in time, even just a couple of decades, what did we think about fat? Or not we, what, did, what were, what were 
what was mainstream media, mainstream medicine touting about fat? We're saying fat's bad for you. Fat's evil. Fat's the cause of heart disease. Fat's the cause of all of our ailments. Fat's the cause of obesity. And so we went through this, you know, decade-long onslaught of attack against fat. And so what 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 happened there was the low-fat, no-fat diet. So all these processed foods were being produced that were low-fat. They were replacing basically fat, a substance in food, with carbohydrate to sweeten it so that it was palatable and had a taste that somebody could like. And so for 10 years, you know, the, the mainstream did this to the diet and the people that followed these low fat diets, what happened? They became severely deficient in these key critical nutrients. And did they get healthier? No. Did they lose weight? No. They got sicker. We saw more heart disease. We saw more cancer. We saw more diabetes. We saw more obesity, right? As a result of low fat diet. So not only is not eating enough fat a bad thing, malabsorbing fat can lead to that same bad thing. And we want to be careful about the potential there. So again, if you're struggling with diarrhea, clay, tan colored stools, um, those are just some of the physical ways that you can identify the manifestation of malabsorption, particularly of fat. We also though have, so let me make some room here. We also have malabsorption of, of other nutrients. And this is another, again, it's super common uh, malabsorption of my, micronutrients, right? So mac, micronutrients being your vitamins and your minerals. Well, what I like to refer to as the molecular workhorses of the body. Without vitamins and minerals, your body can't heal, can't repair, can't do what it's supposed to do. These run a lot of the machinery, the little microscopic machines that, you know, the enzymes and the other, um, the other chemical reactions, you need vitamins. That's why vitamins are oftentimes referred to as co-enzymes. An enzyme is a protein motor that your DNA builds and it usually has a function. Some enzymes build hormones, some enzymes build proteins, some enzymes um, put protein and fat together to form a new molecule. Well, a coenzyme is like the key that starts the motor, and that's what vitamins and minerals are. They're coenzymes of these little of these little motors produced by your DNA that help your biochemical functions move along aptly. And so, without micronutrients, you're not going to heal. So you have reduction in the ability to heal. And so, what does that typically look like? Clinically, it looks like prolongation of illness despite diet change and that's why we're talking about this tonight because if you've changed your diet and you're still struggling but you haven't addressed whether or not you have a malabsorption problem leading to micronutrient deficiencies then it wouldn't surprise me if this is you if this is you still struggling um, at finding a path to wellness and finding a way to feel better and have more energy and to heal more uh, responsively not need medicines not have to treat symptoms etc so Macronutrients, micronutrients, very critical. This is what is malabsorbing. So when we use that term malabsorption, we're talking about malabsorption of these things, right? Which are, again, the components within our food that allow our body to heal, repair, and maintain its normal function. As I mentioned earlier, some symptoms of malabsorption, again, the light-colored stool, the tan or the clay-colored stool, that's fat malabsorption typically. But sometimes what we'll also see is foul-smelling stools and this is this is kind of more so if this is fat a lot of times this will be protein malabsorption um, the proteins when they're not pro properly broken down they form different byproducts that can cause a very very foul odor within the stool and so again if you've got you know if you go to the bathroom and not the stool is supposed to smell wonderful and flowery right but if you uh, there's a difference between how it smells and when it really really smells quite foul and if that's you, you might consider that you are suffering with a protein malabsorption issue. Floating or sticking to the, to the side of the toilet bowl, this is also can be oftentimes fat malabsorption as well, especially the floating. It's the fat, right, with, that is present in higher quantities that leads to that, that floating stool versus, uh, versus non-floating. So again, these are just things you can look for. If you're, if you're trying to understand whether or not maybe some of this is having to you, physical symptoms that you can pay attention to in your bowels directly. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.